Well, thank you, Craig. Uh, I want to start by just echoing Craig's comments about how it feels really good to be back in front of a live audience. You know, virtual meetings have their place, and Lord knows we did plenty of those. Uh, but I, my personally, I'd much rather be here in person. Uh, at last year's virtual annual meeting, uh, I talked a lot about the pandemic and the adjustments that we had to make to be able to continue providing the essential electric service that makes our lives possible. Uh, so I'm not going to rehash any of that other than to say that our employees are back in our buildings, our lobbies are back open to the public, and as Craig mentioned, we were able to get in all nine of our district meetings over the past several weeks in person with our members. So it, it appears that we're, we're making some progress. Uh, you know, the public health crisis part of the pandemic, that seems to be behind us. Uh, however, we're still dealing with the, the pandemic and the after effects. Uh, if you attended our district meetings, we talked about this at length. Uh, for purposes of this meeting, I'll just hit the highlights of that. Uh, material costs and supply chain issues are creating very real problems for us. Uh, the cost of materials that we use for our line construction, those costs have skyrocketed. On average, we're seeing increases of 30% or more in all the materials that we buy to, to build our distribution system. And everything you're feeling at the gas pump, we're feeling that too. And in our case, it's mostly diesel fuel. Uh, materials that have historically had lead times measured in days or weeks are now months or even years. Uh, we've, we've had situations where we can place an order for necessary materials, but vendors have, won't even, they're not even willing to quote the price that it's going to take once, once it is available to us. So and as a provider of an essential service, we're not able to just sit back and, and wait for it to blow over. We don't have that option. Uh, this, this historic inflation and supply chain delays are expected to get worse before they get better. Uh, as of March 1st, we had to implement our first rate increase in six years. Uh, we don't make that decision to increase rates without thorough analysis, and we're quite simply out of other options. Uh, through all this past year, providing service to our members remains, remains at the forefront of what we do. Uh, happy to report, though, you know, through all the grim moments, uh, there is some good news. In 2021, we achieved our best ever SADI score. So you might well, what in the world is SADI? Uh, SADI stands for System Average Interruption Duration Index. Uh, that doesn't mean anything to you either. But what that is, it's a measure of the average number of minutes that our members experienced out of power in the last 12 months. So you may, may or may not be able to see that. It's the one on the right, the, the orange line. You can see that. The average member spent under three hours out of power in 2021. Uh, that trend continues to trend favorably. So we've spent a lot of time and effort working on system reliability, and we're going to continue to do so. Uh, another reliability metric similar to, to SADI is Katie. Let's say, again, that doesn't mean anything to you, but that's customer average interruption duration index. And what that is is a measure of the average amount of time it takes us to restore a power outage. Uh, so it's the same as Sadie, both of these outage metrics are trending favorably. The biggest contributor for us to improving our reliability is our right-of-way management plan. Uh, two years ago, we completed our first full cycle of, of what, we, what we call our Integrated Vegetation Management Plan, or IVM. Uh, it's a seven-year rotation for tree clearing and right-of-way maintenance. We're now in the second year of our second cycle, and that commitment to maintenance is paying dividends for us. With the vegetation growth in our region, uh, we need to clear and maintain those corridors on a rotating basis. If we waited longer than seven years to revisit a sectional line, uh, the vegetation growth just gets more and more difficult and more and more costly to get, that, get those lines cleared. Uh, the two tree, two tree crews that Craig mentioned a little bit, we, uh, we added a couple of years ago, are, are paying dividends as well. These crews are the ones that handle the tree requests in your yards or on your property. When you call the office to report a tree that, that looks to be endangering the line, these are the employees that respond. Uh, prior to hiring these crews internally, we utilize an outside contractor for that work. Uh, in addition to that member requested work, uh, they also take care of danger trees, or DTs as we call them in the business. Now uh, these are the trees that, that are threatening the line, that are outside of the right of way, but eventually are gonna cause a power outage at some time. So when those guys are out driving around and they see one, uh, they'll stop and take care of that and prevent a future outage. In 2021, these crews completed 958 member requested tree service orders. So they were on 958 of your property's clearing clear danger trees. 
In addition to that, they, they removed 89 of the DTs I was talking about that, that were not member requested, but that they noticed and they took care of. Just last year alone, these two two-person crews, that's all, it's four people that did all this work. They saved LCP and our members nearly $250,000 from what it would have cost us to pay an outside contractor to do that work. Also in the past year, uh, new line crews were hired uh, with the primary task of working large-scale construction projects and working on age-related line replacement. These crews also are saving money that would normally be paid to contractors and that they're going to enable us to replace the 75 miles of old line every year that it's going to take us to maintain reliable service. 2021 was only a partial year of having these two five-person crews, but their results were outstanding. When we put the business case together a few years ago, deciding whether we should, should bring these couple of construction crews in-house or if we should continue contracting, uh, we, we needed to have them working at about $32,000 a mile of cost for line construction for it to make sense for us. Uh, in 2021, their average cost per mile was just over $25,000 a mile. Uh, you compare that to what we're paying now for outside contractors to do that work at roughly $49,000 a mile. These crews saved the co-op and our members nearly $900,000 in 2021 alone. And this was only a partial year. Uh, we expect that cost savings to increase as we've seen outside contractor pricing increase dramatically during the pandemic. Uh, the workforce challenges are very real and your, your contractors are finding that they're having to pay more to, to attract employees to be able to do the work. These crews are also available to assist with outage restoration, uh, providing a better response time for these emergencies. In August, we utilized these crews in two events here in the Grand Rapids and Cohasset area, and they saved us what we're estimating would have been roughly $150,000 to bring in an outside contractor at their elevated storm pricing rates. Uh, so by doing that, the one-year savings of these two five-person crews, that, that outage pushed it over a million dollars just in one year for having our own internal construction crews. These, these line workers are a huge asset to the cooperative. So shifting gears a little bit, but I'm going to stay in the good news department. Uh, every year or two, we survey our membership to gauge their satisfaction with us. Uh, we take the results of that survey very seriously. It helps us identify areas where we can make improvements. Uh, survey focuses on five areas that drive satisfaction. Uh, electric cost, electric service, our employees and our member service, bills and payments and communication. Uh, so I'm pleased to announce that we achieved our highest ever satisfaction score of 77. Uh, in addition to that score, overall satisfaction score of 77, we achieved a near record score of 69 for our retention percentage. And uh, what that is, that retention percentage, that measures a member's likelihood to stay with Lake Country Power if they had a choice. Uh, to provide some context, you know, what does a score of 77 really mean? Uh, the average Touchstone Energy Cooperative, of which we are one, scored 74. Uh, but two others on this list I want to highlight. Uh, one's Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola had the same satisfaction score of 77 that we do. Uh, so to me, it means our members are as satisfied with us as they are their Coke or Diet Coke. So to me, that's pretty good. With that said, there's room for improvement. Uh, Anheuser-Busch scored 78. So we've still got some work to do before our members are as satisfied with us as they are their Budweiser or Bud Light, but we'll, be, we'll keep working on it. It's my privilege to lead the 142 employees of Lake Country Power who ultimately work for each of you. They're your neighbors, your friends, sometimes even your own family. We reside in more than 30 local communities throughout our service territory. They're dedicated to meeting Lake Country Power's mission of providing you a safe, reliable, and affordable electric service. Working here tonight, we have roughly a third of our total workforce at this annual meeting. And I'm proud to say our employees work very hard for all of us, myself included. They help members with new services, tree requests, they resolve problems, process energy efficiency rebates, restore power, and visit your homes. Our highly dedicated and talented employees take their jobs seriously. They are truly the instruments of success at Lake Country Power. I appreciate their consistent good work, their sharing of ideas, and their constant awareness of professionalism. To all our employees, thank you. And tonight we've got a, a special presentation to four of our employees who are being recognized for an incredible act of heroism. Uh, last November, a Cohasset line crew of Tim Rasmussen, Cody Vredenberg, Matt Beatty, and Tyler McClellan were traveling east of Hibbing when they came across a one-car rollover. 
They jumped out of the vehicle to investigate and found a young woman trapped upside down in a ditch filled with water. There was no hesitation on their part as they were able to free the woman from a life-threatening situation with little time to spare. For their role in coming to the aid of someone in crisis, they were recently presented with the 911 Lifesaver Award by St. Louis County Sheriff Ross Littman. Also, each are receiving Great River Energy's Award of Excellence as seen here on the stage for their selfless acts. I'm here to receive the awards on behalf of the entire crew are Cody Breedenberg and Matt Beatty. Uh, could, you, could you guys come up and I'll present you with your award. Before I close, I would also like to recognize those who have retired from the co-op in the past year. Uh, in 2021, 10 long-serving employees moved on to the next chapter in their lives. Uh, we'll miss their contributions to Lake Country Power. Uh, they include General Manager Greg Randa. Uh, Greg is here. Uh, from operations, Mark Mudrick, Wendy Appleby, Mark Olson, Greg Archer, Kerry Corpola, and Byron Seaman. Consumer Account Representative Marianne Coatsworth, Judith DeMarchi from Accounting, and Key Accounts and Business Development Manager Todd Johnson. Uh, we wish them all well and the very best in retirement. The last thank you, I, I promise, is to you, our members. Uh, thanks for your understanding and support over another challenging year. Uh, rest assured, I will always lead this cooperative with your best interests in mind. As members, directors, employees, and myself as general manager, we're all connected through the co-op. We are a co-op family. So for my family, our LCP working family, please know that we'll continue to do our best for your family. And thank you.